Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, it's been a little while since we've done uh, one of these global meetups. Um, the goal this year, I think, will be to try to do them quarterly to get pe more people involved. And in particular, I think the most interesting one will probably be the one that happens in quarter three, which will also include uh, Google Summer of Code contributors. Um, and so you'll get a chance to kind of preview some of the work they've been doing. Uh, but we're at the early stages of that process uh, in terms of Google Summer Code. Uh, before we talk about that in detail, um, I just wanted to cover a couple uh, small things. So uh, one thing that uh, we continue to work on is um, updates to Bluetooth compatibility for Android 12 and later. Um, most recent release that we just put out uh, does uh, relax some things that we were finding to be issues with Bluetooth around certain mo um, models of phones, um, where uh, despite the fact that Google says that uh, the old Bluetooth permissions are no longer required, some phones are still enforcing that. Um, so uh, you can compile your apps and they will have the um, restrictions relaxed, uh, or you can sideload the companion app from AI2 uh, to get those relaxed restrictions. Um, this shouldn't affect uh, people who use certain other certain types of phones. So like I know Google Pixels um, do seem to enforce the right set of permissions. I think Samsung as well, which is, uh, those are the primary devices we test with uh, at MIT. Um, but for the, the other makes, um, you will need to uh, adjust uh, or rebuild your apps um, with AI2. Uh, I have been working on updating the Bluetooth uh, low energy extension as well to take into account these um, new permissions. Um, there is an, uh, a beta build that's available uh, for people to try out. Um, I think there is at least one issue there with respect to the connect Bluetooth connect permission not being requested properly. So I'm going back and I'm fixing that. Hopefully we'll have an update this week for you. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you are affected by Android 12 and Bluetooth Low Energy, uh, please keep an eye out for that um, in the community. Uh, so the next thing I wanted to, um, actually, any before I continue, anyone have any questions? Uh, you can feel free to just drop them in the chat, or if you're if you want to unmute and and ask, you can do so. Um, okay, but if there's nothing around Bluetooth, so the next uh, next item that I'd like to discuss is uh, the. Um, work we've been doing with uh, the App Inventor Foundation and Kojular. Uh, and uh, Diego, who's the CEO of Kojular, is also on the call here. Um, and uh, so for those of you who didn't see the announcement uh, a couple weeks ago, um, Kojular uh, and the App Inventor Foundation and MIT are partnering to try and uh, bring over as many uh, components and functions that uh, Kojular has added on top of App Inventor uh, back into the open source community, uh, which is obviously a, a very big deal uh, for everyone who uses App Inventor. Um, and also as part of that, we're working to um, look at the user interface and user experience changes that Codular has made to App Inventor and try to understand how to best incorporate those um, into the MIT version of App Inventor. Um, the main thing here is that we'll be offering um, the existing user interface, uh, but we'll also, as this work continues, be offering um, uh, a different user interface uh, that will hopefully be more streamlined for people. Um, and, uh, but that, that work is ongoing, but um, uh, and th for those of you who are on the, uh, uh, you know, watch us on GitHub, you'll be seeing uh, more and more pull requests coming in to um, try to bring features um, into the open source system. Um, so please, uh, you know, feel free to comment on pull requests or try to help out uh, in uh, the different ways that you're able to. Um, you know, our goal here is really to try to reach as many uh, open source developers as possible uh, and try to uh, make for a more uh, robust uh, developer ecosystem around App Inventor. Uh, and then the next thing I have, oh, so any questions about our uh, collaboration with Kojular. Okay. Um, so uh, the next thing on my list is Google Summer of Code. So uh, Susan, I'll let you uh, take over now. Well, um, 
we are now open for proposals and um, proposals are uh, starting to, to roll in. Um, I think uh, we are, as of today, uh, com completing our uh, open source release of iOS, which is significant for anyone who is looking to propose an iOS project. Um, uh, uh, it's We are available to provide feedback on um, proposals for anyone who is uh, looking to uh, looking for feedback before they uh, submit their proposals, previous versions of the uh, uh, of the Summer of Code submission website allowed us to do that um, through Google. That there was a draft mode, and that draft mode has been reviewed, removed. So that makes um, uh, that makes it a little bit more difficult for us to offer direct feedback. But feel free to. Um, ask for feedback through the um, through the community forum, um, and uh, uh, and you know we always tell people do not worry about your proposals or your ideas being stolen. We are tracking these things, and we do uh, see who is posting and asking questions first. Um, the other most useful piece of advice is. Um, uh, Take a look at our help wanted uh, uh, issues, uh, and we have a there is a uh, um, there is a post I have in the community forums that I did have um, pinned. I can double check that it's still pinned. It might have timed out. Um, that will point you to all of these things, and um, just take a look at those. And because um, we are taking a look at who is involved and who is asking questions on the forum as part of our evaluation. Uh, is there anything else you would want to add to that, Evan? Um, uh, no, I think that kind of covers everything. Uh, the main thing would be um, when you do share your proposals on the community site, uh, the easiest thing for me at least is if it's a uh, Google Doc and it's set so that we can provide suggestions because um, otherwise actually commenting uh, makes, is a little bit difficult. Um, but yeah, I will be making time uh, most of next week to review proposals. So ideally, if you can get your drafts available by the end of this week, um, that would be ideal for us. And then we will be, um, certainly I will be reviewing them starting on Friday. Uh, and then the rest well, I guess of the team one, has time available. Yes, go ahead. One additional thing is that we did get a question about um, whether you needed to s submit our, um, our Google form uh, for uh, our, our application Google form, if you were planning to submit multiple proposals, and the answer is no, we are uh, we're connecting that up on the back end. You only need to submit once, right? And, and the, the the purpose of our version of the form is for us to try to understand, you know, how you've come to explore App Inventor and understand how App Inventor works, um, which may not necessarily be the most appropriate content for the proposal. Um, so we try to keep that separate, um, so that way in your Summer of Code proposal, you can really focus on, you know, the meat and potatoes of the proposal itself and what you plan to implement. Um, and there's certain things like we request that you try to build an app with App Inventor and provide us with the APK file, which obviously is not really a, a valid thing to upload to the, the Google portal. So we try to keep those separate. But we will only review the last entry. So you can submit the form multiple times if you need to like update or change something, but we will only review the last entry that goes in. All right. And I think the deadline is next Friday. Is that right, Susan? For our proposals? Maybe Tuesday, actually. Um, let's just verify that real quick. Is the time? Is the time? Uh, yes. So proposals are due um, April fourth, which is Tuesday. Uh, next Tuesday, not tomorrow. Uh, so please, yes, if you can get everything to us by Friday, so we can review uh, a draft. We'll do our best to review as many as we can, um, and then uh, make sure you get your final versions in before the deadline closes on 
next Tuesday. Yeah, I guess that's always worth mentioning as well. We have no power to extend deadlines. So this is all, it's all between you and Google. So it, it is a very hard deadline. They, they don't really grant exceptions at any stage of this process. All right. Um, so uh, any questions for our Google Summer of Code? Um, I think I see at least one potential or two potential Google Summer of Code students on here. So. <laughs> Okay, um, not hearing anything, I'll move on. Uh, so the next item on my list is uh, the iOS status update. So we have released an updated version of the iOS companion about uh, two weeks ago now, I think. Uh, the major thing with this new version is that it supports the WebRTC functionality, which is the same uh, connection mechanism that's used on the Android side by default. Uh, and this has allowed us uh, to turn on HTTPS support for App Inventor. Now it's not uh, enforced by default, so you are welcome to visit AI2 over HTTPS, um, but if you encounter any issues, one, please inform us of those issues, and then two, you can always fall back to HTTP uh, in the meantime. Um, if you have tried AI2 test, it is enforced by default on uh, AI2 test, and there's no way to use HTTP there. Uh, so far, we haven't heard any um, issues around this, so uh, we're pretty excited that we're able to offer App Inventor securely now. Um, and of course, a special thanks to Jeff, who did a lot of the original WebRTC implementation um, to make that happen. So, um, so iOS, that's the major thing um, that's in this most recent release. Um, the other major announcement that we have around iOS is that we have agreed to open source the iOS version under the existing Apache license. Um, so it is um, available open source now. I just pushed that up to GitHub a few minutes ago. So if you fetch <laughs> from uh, the upstream repository, you will have access to our iOS uh, code as well. Uh, and that includes uh, three major components. So the first thing is, a framework called ScheMeKit, uh, and ScheMeKit is basically our uh, implementation of Scheme for iOS. Um, it is based on an open source library called Pikrin, uh, which we've extended to support doing foreign function interface calls to Objective-C and Swift. Uh, it has a framework called AI Component Kit, which is our implementation of the various App Inventor components in Swift. Uh, and then it has AI Companion app, which is um, an Xcode based version of the AI Companion app that you can compile and run on your iOS device or using the iOS simulator. Uh, so in particular, we're really excited about this because it um, allows us to now uh, include iOS components um, and features as something that can be contributed to as part of Google Summer of Code. So if you are planning to do a, an iOS component uh, for App Inventor for Google Summer Code. Uh, definitely uh, start looking at the sources, try to build uh, the system. We've updated the README to include some additional iOS specific instructions uh, that are necessary. Um, and uh, I've also updated the wiki page for Google Summer of Code so that you can see a list of potential iOS components that we are really interested in getting um, implementations for. Uh, you know, so the components that exist on Android and we feel would definitely uh, benefit from having an iOS implementation. So, uh, you know, priority will be given to iOS projects that are incorporating one of those uh, components if you propose to do something with iOS. Uh, what this does not include is the build server stuff, which is still in process and we're still working on. Um, but you should be able to run your own um, version of the iOS companion based on this open source release. Um, let's see, that's all I have from my list. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, okay, can I still apply to your org given that the deadline is just a week away? Sure, yeah, I mean, as long as you get the proposals in and submit our form before uh, April 4th, then you're good to go. Um, you know, certainly we definitely encourage everyone to get App Inventor uh, built locally on their own machine prior to submitting to Google Summer of Code. And ideally, you know, we're looking to see, um, you know, some small pull requests to try to make sure that you understand how to 
um, make contributions to App Inventor um, at a very high level. And then, you know, over the course of the summer, you'll dive deeper into the larger project that you propose for Google Summer of Code. But yeah, uh, you've still got a week, so get working. <laughs> Any other questions? Let me see, I did say, so somebody on the forum had asked about screen orientation problem. I don't know if that person is on this call. Um, I don't recognize the name, or rather I don't match the name to anybody on here. Um, and there's, I know there are two screen orientation problems um, that I'm aware of. There's uh, one related to the event not, the event fires, I believe before the transition rather than after the transition, so all the measurements are wrong and still reflect the old orientation. Um, and the second thing that I'm aware of is that um, I believe in the manifest file, we assert that the activity is orientations unspecified. So it always defaults to portrait, even if you intend to have it be landscape. Um, I'm not sure which of those two issues this person was referencing, but uh, we are aware of that. Of that. Um, but it's also been an issue in App Inventor for quite some time. Um, if anyone is interested in tackling that issue, um, I believe they're both logged on GitHub, so you're welcome to go and find them and leave a comment saying that you'd like to work on it. All right, uh, any other questions? There was a requested screen, uh, screen start. Okay, thanks ABG. Um, yeah, okay, so there might be another thing where the event is possibly fired at the very beginning. Um, okay, we could, I can look into that or one of us can look into that. Um, so maybe, maybe there are three uh, screen orientation problems. <laughs> um, there may also be a ver an iOS flavor or component to this as well. I'm not sure yet. Uh, you know, obviously, getting everything to work exactly the same on both platforms is a real challenge. Um, and as you'll see as you play around with the iOS stuff, for those of you who are interested in that, um, there are uh, plenty of issues to tackle there. And we're looking forward to contributions from folks who are happy to tackle those problems. OK, uh, any other questions? All right, um, I guess with that, we will uh, end the meeting. So thank you very much for everyone who attended and thank you for those of you who asked questions. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again next quarter. Have a good one. <laughs>